So for this question, we're told that there was some contest with 20 participants, and it took place over three days. And every single time a question was answered, some points were given. And so we are asked that if we select a contestant at random, what is the probability, the chance, that they received a score of 5 on day 2 or day 3, given the condition that the contestant received a score of 5 on one of the three days? Okay, so since it's saying that the contestant has to receive a score of 5 on one of the three days, which means that anyone who never got a 5 at all, like this column, they never receive a 5 out of 5, they, they, this column never received a 5 out of 5, this column never received a 5 out of 5, we can't ignore it because it doesn't meet that condition. And it says that what is the chance that you pick a contestant who received a 5 out of 5 on at least one day, got it on day two or day three. So the probability of anything is the number of things that you're looking for, the number of things that you want, divided by the total number of things that meet your criteria. So what does that look like for this question? So the number of things that we want, what do we want? We want somebody who scored a five on day two or on day three. So we want someone here or here because they scored a five on day three and they scored a five on day two. So any one of these columns are good. So that means that there are three plus two people who meet our criteria divided by the total number of people in our condition. So our condition is that a contestant received a score of five on at least one of the three days. So that means anyone who received a five ever. And that total is seven. So the answer is five over seven. That is the probability. So for this question, we're told that there's 0.35x of something, and we want to know what does that show as a decreasing value. So whenever you multiply x or anything by a percent, you're either gonna gain or lose something. And if your percent is less than one, you lose something. If it's more than one, then you gain something. And in this case, it's less than one. So for example, let's say you had 100 apples. Okay, and then we multiply it by 35%, zero point, which is 0 0.35. Well, how many apples are you left with? Well, you multiply it up, you're left with 35 apples. So you lost something. Well, how many did you lose? Well, we started with 100, so 100 minus 35 is equal to 65. So we lost 65%, so the answer is D. But the more intuitive way to do this, instead of using this random example, is to just know that if you're multiplying by a percentage that's less than one you're losing, and if it's more than one you're gaining. So one minus your percent equals your loss. So in this case, one minus 0 0.35 is equal to 0 0.65. And 0 0.65 times 100% is equal to 65%. So for this question, we're told that 411 US residents were sampled, and we want to make an estimate on the entire US population of 300 million based on this sample. So the estimate we want to make is how many people in the millions express the difference between the number of people who favor or strongly favor nuclear energy compared to the people who oppose or strongly oppose it. Okay. So to answer this, we need to use ratios or percents. And ratios and percents are basically things that we use to make a guesses about big groups. We look at something small and assume that the patterns and percents and ratios that we find will perfectly match the larger population. So in this case, we're going to look at 411 Americans and assume that the statistics and data that we learn about these 411 Americans will represent these 300 million. So let's start by finding the 
difference between the people who somewhat favor or strongly favor nuclear energy and the people who somewhat oppose it. So the difference means to subtract. So what we first need to find is the total number of people who favor it or somewhat favor it. So that's 56 plus 214. And that is equal to 270. And the group that opposes it is 104 plus 37. And that is equal to 141. Okay, so now we need to take the difference between these two. We need to subtract them. So 270 minus 141 is equal to 129. So that is the difference of people who somewhat favor or strongly favor it to people who oppose it or strongly oppose it out of this 411. But now we need to make a ratio. So our ratio would be what is in our interest. So 129 is our interest because that is what meets the criteria that we're given, the difference of the people who like nuclear energy, people who don't like it, divided by the total. And we're told that the total is 411. 0 0.3138 six eight six this number here is what we're going to use to make an estimate on the total population of the united states 300 million so all you need to do is just multiply so we have 300 million americans and then we have our ratio which is 0 0.3139 about but you multiply these together you can describe the entire population of america so doing this, you have 94 million. And so what that means is that out of the 300 million people, 94 million have a difference between the people who like nuclear energy and people who don't like nuclear energy. So to summarize, we're using a ratio of a sample size of 411 to make a assessment on a total, the 300 million. So for this question, we're given some box and whisker plots, and we need to see which one of these statements is true. So the crux of this question is, can you read a box and whisker plot? So basically, you need to know that this upper dash here is your max, is your upper extreme, which means this lower dash is your minimum. It's your lower extreme. And up here is your upper quartile. And down here is your lower quartile. And the middle, this middle dash, is your median. So now that we know that information, what can we say about these? The mean of group 1 is greater than the mean of group 2. Well, the box of whisker plot don't offer anything about the mean. So A and B is already out. C, the medium of group 1 this guy is greater than the median of group 2. Yes, it is, because we know that the medium is this middle one. So the answer is C. And so for this question, we're told that 15% of people in a committee are students, 45% of them are teachers, 25% of them are administrators, and the last six people are students. And we want to know how many more teachers were invited the administrators. Okay, so first we need to know is how many of each category were there. So we know that all these percentages must add up to 100. So 100 minus 15% minus 45% minus 25% has to equal, let's say, x, where this is the percent of students. So solving this, we get 15. So that means that 15% of people are students. So now that we know this information, we can see how many total people there were. 6 over the total times 100 has to equal 15. So 6 over the total is equal to 0 0.15, which means the total is equal to 40. So there's 40 people total in attendance. And so you want to know how many more teachers were there compared to school and district administrators. 
So we're told that there are 45% teachers. So 0.45, 45% of 40 is the number of teachers, 18. 18 teachers. And we're told that there are 25% of school and district administrators out of the 40. So multiplying this out, there are 10 administrators. And it wants to know how many more. So you guys subtract these. So 18 minus 10 is 8. So for this question, we're given sum A saying that A is equal to 2,241%. So divide by 100 because we have percents. Of, of means to multiply. So multiply by something of the sum of B and C. And we're told that B is equal to 83%, so 83 over 100, of means to multiply, of C. And we want to know what percent of B is A. So basically, we want to write everything in terms of B and A. So we're almost there. We have A, B, and C. So we can convert this C into a B. We'll get what we want. And luckily, they tell us this is C and this is B. So we can rewrite C in terms of B. So B is equal to 0.83C. And that means C is equal to B divided by 0.83. So let's plug that into our equation here. So A is equal to 22.41 times B plus E over 0.83. So if we distribute this 22.41, we have A is equal to 22.41B plus 22.41B all over 0.83. So if we do that division, we have A equals 22.41B plus 27B. Adding this together, we get A is equal to 49. 41b. Now remember, we did everything in terms of decimals because we divided by 100. So multiply everything by 100. A is equal to 4,941% of B, which is answer choice D. So for this question, we're told that a manager estimates that the increase he had from 2012 to 2013 will be doubled that the increase from 2013 to 2014. And we want to find out how many subscriptions did he expect to be sold. Okay, so let's start by seeing how much of an increase he actually had. So 5880 minus 5600 is his increase. And that's 280 subscriptions. So that's how many subscriptions he had. And what is that as a percent? 280 is our interest. And what we start with is 5,600. We can ignore this because we want to see how much did we increase from our beginning point. Our beginning point was 5,600 and we added 280. So what is that as a percentage? 280 is 0.05 or 5% of what we started with, 5,600. So if he's saying that that is double what he's expecting now, that means 5% cut in half divided by two is 2.5%. He's only expecting to see a 2.5% increase in subscriptions this year. Okay, so what is that? Well, now our new start is 2013, 5880. So 2.5%, so 2.5 divided by 100 because it's in percents of 5880 will be 147 subscriptions. But this is how much he gains. He wants to know how many he, does he sell total. So just add them together. 5880 plus 147 is equal to 6,027. So for this question, we're given a table with some blood type classifications. And we want to know that if someone with Reese's negative is chosen at random, we are given this probability. And what is this unknown X here? Okay. So what is the probability? We know the probability is what we is our interested 
piece of information divided by the total that meets our criteria. So in this case, we're saying that this person needs to be Reese's negative. So anything up here, we could just ignore because they are positive. We're never going to pull from there. We're only pulling from the negative people. So that means one over nine has to equal our person of interest. Our person of interest is someone who is negative and B. So negative and B, two. Two divided by the total. The total has to be people who are negative. We are told that we're only going to pick from the negative slot. So seven plus two plus one plus X. And we can solve for this. So one over nine is equal to two over 10 plus X. And we can cross multiply. So 10 plus X times one is equal to nine times two. So 10 plus X is equal to 18. X is equal to eight. So for this question, we're told that you have some data set A with 10 integers, all of them being less than 60, and we're given nine of them. And the average for these is 42. And we know that the mean of data set A, including the 10th number, is bigger than 42 and is also an integer. So what can that final value X be? So a question like this would be pretty cumbersome to do by hand because you would need to know that the average is the sum of all these numbers divided by how many is in your data set. So you're going to end up with 378 plus X over 10 is going to equal to some some average that we don't know. We just know it's bigger than 42. Or we can just go into Desmos and kind of brute force this. So Desmos, you could just type in me and enter in all of the data and some constant C, the 10th number. And we make a slider for that. And we're told in the problem that no number is bigger than 60. So just set that as your bound here, 60. And we know that it has to be an integer, a non-decimal number. So have it set for 60 in steps of one and just keep dragging this until you see the mean change to something that is bigger than 42 and also an integer. So here at 52, we have 43 and then these are decimal numbers and we hit the end. So that means the answer is right here, 52. So for this question, we are told that we can calculate the age of a tree in years by multiplying the diameter of the tree in inches by a constant called the growth factor, which is put in this. So a white birch tree and a pin oak tree are what we're interested in. And they both have a diameter of one foot. So what will the difference be in inches 10 years from now? Okay, so let's start by finding how old the birch tree is and the pin oak tree is right now. So we're saying that if you take this growth factor, so in this case five, and multiply it by the diameter of the tree, which right now is one foot, but we're told that one foot is 12 inches, that is the age of the tree. So the tree is 60 years old. And the pin oak tree, by the same merit, is three times 12. So it's 36 years old. And in 10 years from now, so we add 10 to both of these, it will be 70 and 46 years old, respectively. So how big will the white birch tree be in diameter? Okay, well, we're told that the age of a tree is equal to multiplying its diameter by the growth factor, five. So solving for the diameter in inches, we have 70 divided by five. Three. We have 46 is equal to its diameter one is 46 times its growth factor, which is three. So its circumference is 46 over three, which gives you 15.33. And we just take the difference. We just subtract these, which is 15.33 minus 14.00, which is 1.33. And the closest one is C. And that is the last question we have for today.